remind you why you need to read your bible every day yes every single day every day you're on social media you're surrounded by friends you're surrounded by people in this world you're surrounded by news sources and every single day you're inputting all of that inside of you and reading your bible just once a week is not enough to cancel that out god is really practical and he's a god of order and a god who rewards you start reading your bible and disciplining yourself even if you don't really understand what's happening in the word at first and he will start implanting in you more the desire to read it and giving you wisdom and revelation to read it. The spiritual world works in a way of use it or lose it. We see that in the parable of the talents. God gives us certain talents, certain giftings, and when we are faithful and when we invest in something, then he multiplies it. The more you use your talents and your giftings and invest in them and use them to serve the kingdom, the more your giftings and your talents and resources multiply in different ways. In the realm of reading your Bible, the more you read your Bible and actually make that step of committing that time, the more he gives you wisdom, understanding, and more of a desire to read the word. So challenge yourself, read your Bible every single day. Good evening. Tonight's top story, everything is awful. We'll A few years ago, I was flipping through the Bible and I was asking God, I said, okay, Lord, we've got this big Old Testament filled with a bunch of do's and don'ts that represents, what, 4,000 years of human history? Mm -hmm. And then we've got this smaller New Testament that Jesus, his life spanned about 33 years. And I said, Lord, what are you saying through all of this? What's the theme through all of this? And there are many themes, but the thing that the Lord said in that moment to me is that love did in 33 years what law and legalism couldn't do in 4,000. It's love that really healed. It's love that really saved. It's love that really delivered. And it's love that does the same today. I know that there are some of y'all out there who are just like me. And you may have said this before. Order my steps, Lord. Order my steps. But what about when God wants to order your stops? So you're questioning your worth, huh? Well, let me encourage you with this. About a year ago, a friend of mine told me this. They said, if God took seven days to create the entire universe and everything inside of it, and he called it good, how much greater value do you think that he places on someone in whom he took nine months to knit together in their mother's womb? Friends, you have value. In Ephesians, it says that we're his workmanship. We're his craftsmanship. And the thing is, the standard by which you measure the ability and the talent of a craftsman or someone who creates is by how much time and effort they take into building building or constructing the blueprints of what they're going to create. And here's the thing, in John 1 verse 1 it says this, In the beginning was the Word, meaning Jesus, uh, and the Word was with God and the Word was God. Friends, here's what that means. It means that since from the beginning of time Jesus has been developing the blueprints of your life, of your existence, meaning this, there is infinite value in your life, there is infinite worth to who you are as a person. So how about them apples? So I'm in medicine and I just finished treating a patient for a sexually transmitted and it made me, um, it just made me remember how there's just protection and safety and obedience to God, right? There's a reason why God has certain things outlined, things that we should not partake in or we should not do before a certain time or certain restrictions. There's a reason for that. There's protection in that because when you become disobedient, now you open yourself up to those, to any consequences connected to that thing, right? If we're looking at like sexual, um, 
purity, for, for example, right? There's a reason why you should wait until marriage before having engaging in sex or unprotected sex, right? Because you don't know what that person may, may be carrying. You don't know what that person may have. And when, you're, and when we treat people with these infections, we see that their partners sometimes don't know and we have to recommend that they share it with anyone that they've been um, sexually associated with, right? And so just understand that there's protection in God's rules and the things that God sets out for, him, uh, for his children. So there are consequences to disobedience. Remember that. Reading the Bible in 90 days, day 17. So today we finished Joshua. Uh, we are flying through books. And as we get farther along, you're going to see that we are finishing books, maybe a couple books a day. Uh, but today we finished Joshua, got a little bit into Judges, but um, not too far. Uh, but I, I want to talk about one thing that I saw in Joshua that was kind of an, uh, an eye-opener, something for us to think about, is that um, when Joshua did everything that he did, you know, led the Israelites into the Promised Land and claimed, claimed it as their own, uh, he did a lot of good things, and uh, eventually the Israelites were doing well. They were doing doing really well, and uh, they were chasing after God. They were doing everything that God said, but then Joshua passed away, and then all the people that knew Joshua like firsthand, like the people who who actually knew Joshua, they also passed away. You know what happened after that? The Israelites went off and did bad things. They forgot God. They did not. Uh, it actually says that they forgot what God did. And how, I mean, how can you do that, right? How can you escape Egypt, go through the wilderness, and uh, and go to the promised land? And even if that was your ancestors, generations behind you, how do you forget what God has done for you? And that's why I think it's just so important that we build up the next generation behind us. That's why I think youth ministry and kids ministry, young adults ministry even, is such an important ministry. You say, when you hear church, you think about Sunday service church, right? Sunday morning, that's the big, the big person's church, right? That's what we used to call it. But we should not discount the other ministries, right? We should not discount youth ministry and kids ministry because those are the people that are going to be taking over for us, right? They're going to be the people that, that take over the church, that are the ones that come up after us and lead the church. So we need to build them up the best that we can. And Joshua did that to an extent, but then people stopped after him and God was forgotten. Let's not be like that. Let's not let this next generation forget who God is, all right? So with that said, go out there. Just do good, be good, and be golden. Take care. If you place your identity in what you do or what you achieve, you will always have to do more and achieve more in order to find your value. So place your identity in Christ and learn to see yourself the way he sees you. I can't make this like a three-way thing. Whoa, I do not partake in such activities at all. Good evening. Tonight's top story, everything is awful. Well You're a tough cookie, and that's the last thing I'll say. Mm. Okay, you want the truth? I'll tell you everything. I'm alive. I'm dead. I'm reading my Bible. I'm rebuking the devil. What you looking at? You looking at me? I'm looking at you. I'm praying for you. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm jumping up and down. I'm spinning around. I'm dead. I'm running around. I'm praying again. God bless you. This is why personal conviction should be kept personal. So a while back, I saw this trend going around Christian TikTok that was like, things I do that other Christians don't. And when I looked at the comments, it was just a bunch of people arguing on why it was wrong or why it was right. Romans 14, 22 to 23 says, you may believe there's nothing wrong with what you are doing, but keep it between yourself and God. Blessed are those who don't feel guilty for doing something they have decided is right. But if you have doubts about whether or not you should 
eat something, you are sinning if you go ahead and do it, for you are not following your convictions. If you do anything you believe is not right, you are sinning. Now, yes, sin is sin whether you feel convicted or not, but every Christian is going to have different boundaries. It's as simple as that. None of the arguing is fruitful and it just confuses non-believers and believers because it used to confuse me too. So just keep it to yourself. Everybody's walk is different. <laughs>